this video, I'm going to talk about uh, one of the required practicals that, that you end up doing. And we're going to look at how you can experimentally verify Hooke's law. So of what you'll get out of this video. So by the end, what we're looking to be able to do is you should be able to define what Hooke's law is and things like the limit of proportionality and attention force. Then we're going to look at describing the setup we would use, including measures to minimize risks involved. We're going to look at how we will process the data to allow us to verify Hooke's law. And we're going to look at how we could calculate the spring constant, including the uncertainty in that spring constant that we would calculate. OK, so first off, let's look at what Hooke's law is. So Hooke's law applies to when we're trying to change the shape of an object by either stretching it out or compressing it. That's when we'd apply Hooke's law. So generally speaking, when you stretch out an object, it will resist you stretching it. And that force that you are feeling resisting you is called a tension force. So if you try and apply forces to stretch an object, those forces would be pulling inwards, like we can see in the diagram, to resist that. And what happens is the more you stretch an object, the harder it will resist you stretching it. Um, so the tension force gets bigger the more you extend an object until you get to the point where you break it. So what Hooke's law says is that for a material, tension force should be directly proportional to the extension, but that only applies up to the limit of proportionality. And just a quick side note at the end, um, if we want to be able to change the length of an object, we have to apply forces at both ends. If we apply a force at just one end, that would make the object accelerate, not extend. So just a quick note there. So let's dig into Hooke's law a little bit more. So what is the limit of proportionality? Well, if you ever look at the graph, you can see to start with, it is a straight line passing through the origin. So we can see it is directly proportional. However, you can see at the end, the graph stops being a straight line. It curves downward, um, probably because the material has started to plastically deform. So that's when we know to stop applying Hooke's law. So Hooke's law will apply in the straight line section. It won't apply in the section where the spring has started to be permanently damaged there. OK, so that's the word expression of Hooke's law. Let's have a look at the mathematical expression. So you'll often see this in the form f equals k delta l or f equals kx, but I'll express it as t equals kx because it's expressing a relationship between the tension force in this object and the extension. So that's why I put a t in there. Uh, but that is essentially what Hooke's law says, where k is known as the spring constant. Uh, or a stiffness constant if you're not dealing with springs, and that will, should be a fixed value for a certain material. So what is this K? So K is essentially how much a material resists stretching. So if we rearrange the equation to, so that K is the ratio of tension to extension, we can see that it has the units of newtons meters to the minus one. And if you have a bigger value of K, that means the material will resist more, the extension more. Or if you apply the same force to try and stretch it, it will extend by a smaller amount. That's what it means. And so in the Hooke's law section of the graph, the spring constant is going to be the gradient of the graph, because we can see we've got tension on the y axis and extension on the x axis. So that blue line you can see there is a steeper gradient, which means we have a higher spring constant. And we can see from this for the same force that extension is smaller. So we can see what we've talked about. So let's compare two materials. Um, so I did this test earlier. I got two different springs. So the first one uh, looks like quite a chunky spring. So what I did was I, on the left, you can see me measuring what the original length of the spring is. And on the right, I've applied a load to it and I've measured the extended length of it. So you can see that to measure a length, I have to take two measurements. Um, so that's why the uncertainty ends up double. But a ruler is an analog measuring instrument. So each measurement 
has a uncertainty of half a division, which is why the uncertainty is 0.05 centimeters there. But because we use two measurements, the uncertainty in the length ends up being 0.1 centimeters because we add those two together. Same thing for the extended length. We use two measurements, each with an uncertainty of 0.05. So the extended length has an uncertainty of 0.1 centimeters. So when we calculate the extension, which is the difference between those two values, we get a value of 1.1 centimeters extension plus or minus 0.2 centimeters, because again, we add together the uncertainties. So let's do exactly the same thing for a different spring. So this one looks like it's a sort of you know, smaller uh, spring, but we do the same process again. We measure the original length and the extended length, and we get an extension of 4.2 centimeters, but plus or minus 0.2. So if you look at those two, we can see that the spring on the left has a much smaller extension when we applied the same load to it. So we can see that even within the uncertainties we've got, clearly the spring constant for the spring on the left is much bigger um, because it got a smaller extension for the same load force. Okay, so let's have a look at how we're actually gonna go about verifying Hooke's law. So this is our general setup. So let's highlight a few key things. Um, we remember from earlier, we need two forces in opposite directions to stretch out a spring. So what we're going to do is clamp the spring at the top there. So there's a reaction force which acts upwards, holding it in place. We also have a spring which we need to check is undeformed before we start. If it's deformed, Hooke's law isn't going to apply anyway. Then we've got um, fixed masses, which we're going to use to apply a load to stretch out the spring. And we've got a meter ruler which will allow us to measure the length of our spring in different scenarios. And we, we've got one with a resolution of one millimeter or its smallest division is one millimeter. Last thing which you might not have spotted down the bottom, we've got a G clamp to um, hold the clamp on the table because as we apply loads that might destabilize the system and it might topple and cause us a, quite a nasty injury. So what we've done is we've clamped it to the table to stop it toppling over there to make us nice and safe. Okay, so um, in terms of the forces we've got in the setup, so we I talked earlier how there's a reaction force upwards from the clamp and we've got these internal tension forces and we've got the weight force we're applying with the masses. So Hooke's law is a relationship between tension force and extension. But tension force is an internal force, so we can't directly measure what it is. So what we have to do is measure something else that is identical to it. So what we're going to do is we are going to apply a mass to the spring and we're going to allow it to become stationary because if it's stationary, we know the resultant force is zero. So in that scenario, if we think about the mass, it has a weight force downwards on it, so it must have a tension force that is equal to the weight force upwards. So actually, the weight force is equal to the tension force, so if we measure the weight force, we are effectively measuring the tension force there. So that's going to be our experimental procedure there. Okay. So that's what we're going to do. So weight force is calculated by doing mass times the acceleration due to gravity. So that's how we're going to get our tensions for our graph. So now we've got our setup. We need to collect some data. Uh, so I did this. I applied different masses, which you can see down the left. And I measured the length with each mass. And I calculated the extension because I measured the original length of the spring as well. Um, so we'll notice all the masses uh, we can measure to the nearest gram because they're slotted masses. All the lengths were measured to the nearest millimetre because we're using a ruler with a resolution of one millimetre. Likewise, the extensions there. The weight forces are calculated by multiplying masses by 9.81, which is why we get a three significant value all the way down that column there. OK, so what we're going to do is plot these on a graph. So we're going to do on a tension versus extension graph, like so. And 
if you plot a line of best fit, we can see that it is a straight line passing through the origin, which is the criteria for a directly proportional relationship. So this experiment has verified Hooke's law works so that tension force is directly proportional to extension. So if we want to find out what the spring constant actually is, what we need to do is measure the gradient of the graph. So that's what you can see there. I've worked out the change in the weight force, which is 8.5 on there. And I've worked out the change in the extension, which is 0.34. And we need the gradient, so we're going to do change in y over change in x. So that gives us a value of 25 newtons per meter as the spring constant. So we need to find out how good that value is. So we need to work out what the uncertainty in our k is. So we know, and you know, how precise we should be. So for our masses, they were all to the, given to the nearest gram. So they're 100 grams to the nearest gram. So we can get the uncertainty in the weight force by multiplying one gram by 9.81 to give you the uncertainty in the weight force. So we, on our, to calculate our gradient, we needed two weight forces because we have to find the difference between two values, which is why the uncertainty is double for the change in the weight force. If we then cal want to calculate the percentage uncertainty in that change, we do the uncertainty divided by the value times 100 gives us a percentage uncertainty of 0.23 for our weight force, so not particularly high. If we remember from earlier, all our extension values have an uncertainty of 0.2 centimetres or uh, 0.002 metres. So we can get a uncertainty in our change in extension, which would be double that, and calculate the percentage uncertainty of that too. So uh, same process there. So we actually have a bit higher percentage uncertainty for our change in our extension. So the gradient is change in y of change in x, so we'd add those two together. So the percentage uncertainty in k is 1.4%, which we can convert back and see that our k has an uncertainty of 0.35 newtons per meter. Um, so therefore, you can see on the right, I stated that k is 25.0, but we can see with that kind of uncertainty, that's not really a reasonable level of precision to go. So I'm going to give it as 25 newtons per meter plus or minus 0.35 newton meters to the minus one for the value of K. Okay, so that finishes off uh, looking at how we'd verify Hooke's law. So these are the things you should now be able to do having watched this video. So have a look through those, make sure you know all of those things. And if you're happy with that, that's great. Uh, it's time to stop watching. Um, if you have any questions, please do feel free to comment and ask. I'll try and get back to you as quick as I can. Um, but thank you very much for taking the time to watch.